Happy Wednesday, Fit Posters. Way in Wednesday, week nine. So today I want to talk to everyone about inspiration. Who or what inspires you? What, when you need a pick-me-up, when you are tired at the gym or you're trying to get a promotion at work and it's not going your way, like what do you reach into internally to, to motivate yourself? <clears throat> I had a friend who loved Lance Armstrong. Whenever we were working out and he started to get tired, he would go, man, Lance Armstrong, Tour de France, he, oh man, I, if he can do it, I can. He had cancer and all this other stuff. Like, he's an inspiration. All that stuff came out with the scandal, and my friend who had looked up to Lance Armstrong was devastated, because this person he had used as inspiration essentially failed him. Like, turned out to not be the person he thought he was. If you use a real person as your inspiration, there, there's a chance they could let you down. Um, some people just put on some music to pump themselves up. Other people think of a certain idea, ideology, religion, something like that. Um, some people, you know, look to fictitious characters, and I think I kind of fall into that camp. And to me it makes sense because Think about a Greek warrior going into battle that has heard the Iliad and they, they think I could be like Achilles, except without the weak spot. Or, you know, a Norseman who is reciting the epic poem of Beowulf to himself. But, but you know, we aspire to be like our heroes in fiction. And that, just look at comic book movies, the superhero boom that's going on right now. People look up to those those characters. One of mine for a long time that I've kind of gotten made fun of a bit for having is Rocky Balboa. the Rocky franchise. He's not superhuman. He's not eloquent. He's not a genius. He's just an average Joe who can take a punch really well, never gives up, and has a good heart. Uh, when, you, when you watch the original Rocky, there's a scene where a little girl, like, hanging out with some hoodlums, yells an obscenity at him, and he takes a minute to stop and talk to her and try to explain how she needs to do a good job of picking her friends because having bad friends can lead you down the wrong path in life. And you know, he's, in that part of the movie, he's a local law, um, in that part of the movie, he's an enforcer for a local mob boss. And he's telling this little girl about life choices. And then you get to see him in action working for the mob boss. He goes to collect from a guy on the docks and he was told explicitly, break the guy's hand, and he doesn't do it. He just kind of chews him out, takes the cash he has, and goes back to the boss. And the boss yells at Rocky for not being vicious enough. But, you know, Rocky, in his Stallone mumble mouth, says, uh, well, if I broke the guy's hand, how is he going to work to pay you back? And that was Rocky kind of giving himself an out on not being a bad guy. Then there's the Adrian, you know, the Rocky, the Rocky franchise has a good love story in it, in that Adrian's a shy introvert, he, he brings her out of her shell, he shows her that she's worth the attention, and then in the later movies, she stands up to her, her butthole of an older brother, uh, she pushes Rocky to be a better person, and Rocky too, she makes him practice reading, because he never really got good at it earlier in life. And she makes Rocky a better person, and he makes her a better person. 
when it comes to like Apollo Creed, you know, he spent two movies fighting Apollo, and then Rocky Three, he he puts his old rivalry aside and works with Apollo. He is in Rocky One, uh, Mickey, his trainer, treats him like garbage at the gym and actually kicks him out. And then when he hits his big, you know, title fight with Apollo Creed, Mickey comes crawling back trying to get him to let him coach him. And Rocky reacts like I think most people would at first. He's kind of petty, you know, tells him to buzz off. And then the scene changes and Rocky goes chasing him down the street and invites him back in. Rocky IV, you know, he becomes more of a patriot. He goes and fights the Russian for, you know, national honor. The point being, Rocky is like a good-hearted guy who also is tough. And he also adapts. Like each movie, he uses a slightly different strategy to defeat his opponent. When I'm at the gym and I'm having trouble, I think Rocky Montage. I think, you know, he got defeated by Clubber Lang because he was kind of coasting on his wins. And then he, he got his head back in the game, trained hard, came back, and took the, took the belt back. I mean, that's... You can lose, and... You, and Oh, and that epic speech. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Like, just just watch the movies. Like, they are great. They're, they're inspirational. They provide good value. Values. No. Trust me. Yeah. You, you could do a lot worse than asking yourself, what would Rocky do? If you really want to aspire to a higher level, though, you say, what would James do?